Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We give the praise and the glory. We appreciate for your goodness and mercy in the name of Jesus. Right now, I pray that God touch your people, bind all powers of darkness, and command every story right now that all oh God may try to interfere with this message. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to come back a little bit again to the money, money, money. So we are dealing with money must come forth series. Money must come forth series. But I'm going to deal with it from the deliverance point of view and warfare. First, are we together? Yeah. Money must come forth. Series. Now, our first scripture, our <laughs> our first thing, scripture. Now, what we see, okay, let me say what Jesus said in this scripture. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, he's talking about Lazarus, amen? amen? If you would do, if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was laying. Now, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice. He did what? There is a reason. There are certain things. When you speak them, you don't whisper. You don't say, Man, I come for. Yeah. Yeah. Even Jesus, the Bible says, He cried with the what? A loud voice in authority. He cried with what? He cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus. And he who had died came out bound, hands and foot with grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Jesus said what? Loose him and let him go. Now, if you see, when he says loose him and let him go, we use this language in warfare. Satan, loose and let me go. Let my finances go. But he cried with them, loud voice. He said, Lazarus, come forth. In other words, when you want to speak the same principle, if you want to speak your money, you must command it to come forth. Remember Jesus used a loud voice. He says, Lazarus, come forth. You need to say money, come forth in the name of Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you want to start to say in your prayers or speak to your dead situation. You're talking to a dead man, but your finances could be dead. Your finances will be dead. And you want to command your finances which are dead in the name of Jesus Christ that I command you to come forth. This is how you pray in warfare. This is how you in other words, you need to command that death spirit, death spirit. Now, when we talk about the spirit of death, when we say the spirit of death is following you, the spirit of death can produce results of either you dying physically or before they can kill you physically, they'll start killing your staff. The Bible says the devil comes to steal, kill and destroy. In other words, they'll start killing your staff. They'll start killing your money flow. They'll start killing your business. They'll start killing joy in your house. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So in other words, you are commanding the spirit of death because the cloth or the cloths that they had bound Lazarus with were cloths that they used to wrap around in the dead. But Jesus said, loose him. Jesus said what? Loose him and let him go. You need to command your money to be loosed so that they can let your money go. Money come forth. Money. Now I want to teach you John chapter 33 verse 22 the Bible says shall declare a thing and it shall happen. In other words what we are trying to say is that when you are praying when you start seeing your money something is wrong in your finances it's time to start commanding money to come it's time to command your money when you observe in your life that money, something is happening to your money like you can't add up to your budget it's like you're starting having more problems than how much money you have immediately as a believer you need to start engaging in warfare whereby you have to command money to come forth start binding spirits that are holding your money start binding and loosening your money some of you you have money that people owe you or maybe they haven't given you a pension i want to tell you how you get that pension if they're giving you stories start binding the spirit that is holding your money and start commanding your money to be loose to be released and start calling money from every direction to come to you. If you can spend a week doing that, you'll be shocked. <coughs> Suddenly, money starts coming. Money has ears. Money can listen to you. It's just the way you don't know how to get it. I am telling you how to get it. Amen. Amen. When I see that my money is not doing well, when I do what? I, I'm telling you what I do. I start commanding money to come. I start commanding money to come. I start asking God, release the angels now that are responsible for money. There is a department of angels responsible for money. Those who go and fetch business for you to bring it to you. Or those who go in the bank, they can even change figures. There are people who have received miracle money. It's because the angel in charge of money, he can go and he change his figures. Gabriel usually is a part of that group. Because he's a messenger, angel. He can go to the bank and he just add zeros. You have a 10 right that add how many zeros? Six. 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 <laughs> ah, you get it what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. So there are angels who do that. But anyway, in this series, we want first things first. First things? Yes. First things? Yes. So we're going to start first in releasing the money. Mm -hmm. I want to start with first things first. So the first thing we're going to do is what I've entitled arresting the arrester. Arresting what? Yes. Arresting what? Yes. Arresting the arrester. Now, Mark chapter 3, verse 27 says, NIV, it says, in fact, it says what? Yeah. No man can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. You cannot enter the strong man's house without tying him up. Tying means to arrest him. That's what the Bible says. Say, Whatever you bind me on the earth shall be bound in heaven. You have to arrest the strong man. Now this is where we go. Even in God himself, when you read you know, Isaiah chapter 45, the Bible says, I shall take you by the hand and I shall break what? Bronze gates. In other ways, and give you riches of darkness. In other ways, the strong man is there. Even the bar, even what? Nightclub. We find the bouncers, isn't it? Yes. Do they put a weak man? No. They put somebody who is huge. 
That man they put there is a strong man. Why do you think they put him? Because he's what? Strong. He's strong. He knows that if they, anybody they can just hold him and he throw the person. Or just say, huh? you just put the chest in your face, huh? And you say, I'm not sorry. Are you getting what I'm saying? So they know exactly that they put a strong man. So that idea is exactly what the devil does. That's why Jesus said, you cannot plunder or you cannot take the goods, which goods, which belongs to you. Unless you buy what? The strong man. Now each family has a strong man. That's what we call them household wickedness. Household wickedness is a spirit assigned over your family. Is a strong man, it's like a bouncer that stands on the blessing of the family. So that bouncer in a demonic realm, he actually determines in the family who should get the blessing or not. That's why in each family you find that there will be one who is wicked, and the wicked one may be prosperous than anybody else. Why? Because the wicked one aligns himself or herself with the strong man. So the strong man is able to take the household blessing and give to that one person or two. But the others need to fight. That's why Jesus said, you can't enter a strong man's house. He was not talking about going to just steal. He was talking, for instance, me, as a man of God, if I have to have you prosper, because you came for help, I need to buy the strong man that controls your family. I need to fight him first before I can take the goods and hand them over to you. Before I can take the job and hand it over to you. I, I see. That's why it becomes more personal. So Jesus was talking about arresting. Arresting the strong man. So first things first. You must tie or arrest the arrester before taking back his goods. Are we together? But let us read 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8 to 23. But I'm going to just jump certain verses. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8 to 23. Verse 13 says, Go find out where he is, the king ordered, so that I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He is in Dothan. Now, I'll tell you what this story is. This story is when Elisha, when? Elisha, the prophet, every time the king of Assyria wants to attack Israel, what used to happen is that Elisha would tell the king of Israel that they will come this way tomorrow, don't go that way. And then the king of Assyria became angry. He says, who is a spy among us? And when he says, who is a spy among us? What happened is that one man says, there is no spy, there is a prophet in Israel, who tells the king, even anything you say in the bedroom. Then the king became angry and he said, okay, go find out where he is, the king ordered, so that I can send men and capture him. And the report came after they went to spy that he was in Dothan. Verse 14 says, then he sent horses, he sent what? Horses. And the chariots and the strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. Are you going to say? This is where we get that, you know, that song, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. Because they went at night and surrounded the city. But when Gea saw them in the morning, who is uh, Prophet Elisha's servant, he became afraid. And Elisha said, the Lord opened his eyes. And when he looked, there was chariots of horses and horsemen, heavenly beings that were surrounding them. Then Elisha said, those who are on our side are more than those that are against us. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000, but only with your eyes shall you see the reward of the, of the wicked. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Now let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And Verse 16, Elisha says, don't be afraid, the prophet answered. These who are with us 
are more than those who are with them. Verse 18 says, as the enemy came down towards him, as the enemy, they came to arrest him. Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike this army with blindness. So he struck them with blindness as Elisha had asked. So in other words, the arrestor, these people, the king says, go and find out where he is so that we may what? Arrest him. But instead, that's what we're saying, the first thing first, if we want to take our money, we need to arrest the what? Arrest. They came to arrest Elisha. But instead of Elisha being arrested, Elisha arrested them. You know what he did? He says, oh, these people are human they don't know that I'm a prophet. He says, strike them with blindness. And they all became blind. And they were asking Elisha. They were what? To say, we are looking for this man. We are looking for Elisha. <laughs> we are looking for? <laughs> they are asking Elisha. We are looking for? The whole army. And Elisha said, oh. No problem, I can lead you to where the man is. <laughs> and he took them. And he went with them to Samaria. <laughs> and when they reached Samaria, the, the Israeli soldiers surrounded them. And then he prayed, he says, Lord, open their eyes. When their eyes opened, they found that the guns were to their head. Uh, you get what I'm saying? So we need to arrest who? Arrestor. We have to arrest the arrestor. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is Elisha captured this man instead of them arresting him. Now certain forces are out there trying to arrest you. I want to let you understand on this secret. There is what we call astro police. Astro what? Police. In the certain kingdom, when they want to fight Christians, majority of people who are worshiping Satan, they don't know that Christians actually are true believers. They think, because they have seen Satan, they have never seen God, they think Satan is God. That's what the Bible says, he claimed to be what? He wanted to be like the Most High. That's why he calls himself the morning star. And Jesus is the bright morning star. So he calls himself the same name, meaning he wanted to be God. I don't want to say. So now, because they have seen, that's why we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. Amen. But they walk by sight. They believe that seeing is believing. Yeah. So he has shown himself to them, and they have believed because of the amount of power he has demonstrated to them. And therefore, when he sends them to say, go and arrest the non-believers, they think they are arresting us as non-believers. They think they are doing the duty to try and what? Arrest non-believers and persecute them and torment them. So most of us are being pursued by satanic forces. You are being pursued by who wants to arrest us? Who wants to what? In other words, warrants of arrest, warrants of has been issued to ask for demonic police to try and arrest you like they did to Elisha. But Elisha arrested what? The arrester. Arrest usually start with evil counsel. Arrest usually start with? Yeah. They'll sit down that this person is giving us a problem. We need to arrest him. We need to what? He's trying to do some business which is reserved for us, we need to arrest him. So the issue, they sit down like they had the council talking to themselves to say who is causing this problem. Remember Elisha was a man of God, right? They say who is causing this? They say Elisha. They say, okay, send the forces to arrest him. It happens also in the spiritual realm. It's exactly the same thing. Let's arrest that person. They can arrest your breath. They can what? If they arrest your breath, and those people die with cardiac, most of them. Cardiac arrest. That's why they call it what? I told you there is a movie. That was, I think, South African movie last year that I told you. 
it's such wicked where they show this this person they say went through the portal how did this boy went through the portal and this guy went to attack the family and he could just arrest you say arrest your breath and people go and die these things are you that's what happens in the spiritual realm they can arrest your breath and you can die with the heart attack i get what i'm saying you can die with what so in other words the purpose of evil counsel taken against you in the kingdom of darkness is to arrest you and subject you to serious manipulation if you fail to render evil or to render evil useless what you should or noun and void what you should happen is you are likely to end up in what is called the prison that's when the bible talks about or when we talk about chains being broken chains being okay. or joseph being arrested and put in the chains when we talk about the blood of jesus breaking the chains we're talking about the spiritual prisons where they arrest you spiritually. They arrest you what? Uh -uh, chains is to do with the handcuffs. Some of you are arrested spiritually. You are arrested what? You are spiritually arrested where you are walking. Actually, there is what is called black witchcraft. There is what is called white witchcraft. There's different categories of witchcraft. The black witchcraft is the one usually responsible for detaining people. For what? Detaining. They can arrest your angel. Like they arrested the angel when he was coming to bring answer to Daniel. Yeah. They can issue arrests. They are demonic officers. They can arrest your angel. They can arrest you in the spiritual realm. Some of you can be arrested. Sometimes you feel like, hey, your soul is not in you. There are people sometimes you feel like you're gonna die and something is weird, right? Mm -hmm. They can arrest your soul and detain it in the spiritual camp. And you'll be walking like a dead, dead alive. And you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They can be tormenting your soul and you can be feeling in pains in your physical body. These are mysteries. These are what? Yes. So in short, because I don't have much time, in short, what you need to pray, pray like David, pray like David. in the second Samuel chapter 15, verse 31. David says, uh, uh, the Bible says, and one told David, say, A hypothet tell is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, Oh Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of a hypothet into foolishness. This man was an advisor of David. But when Absalom tried to take the kingdom over, this man decided to jump to Absalom group. And because his counsel used to be like when he give counsel, the Bible says it was like as if God spoke himself. So now imagine he's giving counsel to Absalom how they should destroy David. But David prayed that God turn his counsel into foolishness. And immediately he offered the counsel for the first time Everyone refused it because of David's prayer. And when everyone refused it, the Bible says this man walked from the meeting, he went home and hung himself. May you pray that those who conspire against you, may their counsel turn into foolish things. May nobody listen to what they are saying concerning you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So in short, just give me a few minutes. In short, agents of Satan, agents of don't easily give up when they decide to arrest a person. You know, so to arrest a prophet, these people, they mobilize the visitor at night, which is also another mystery. Because powers of darkness operate at night. So we see that most of us, we need to be released from the prisons of the enemy. In other words, also another fact that I want you to understand is that the amount of arrestors, the amount of set against one life tells a story of the value and the greatness of that life. This man, how could he send the whole army for one man? Different departments and he surrounded the city. 
It means this man's life was like a thousand lives. Are you getting what I'm saying? His value was so important. So when your destiny, you when your destiny is very important, even in football, if the striker is very dangerous, they will put two people to mark that person. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. This is why if your child will be a great child, they may go through a lot of problems. The amount of arresters that will come around them, they will be too much because they are afraid even one chance can cause disaster. Are you getting what I'm saying? So some of us, that's the reason why we have been through so much problems is because our lives of the great value that the devil sent so many arresters around you. But we need to arrest them.